Hello, I'm Hazel and I'm one of the creators of Rational Creatures and today we're going to be having a Jane Austen look around bar. Hey. Not a coincidence. So I'm just walking up to Alexandra Park in Northanger Abbey, I think. Catherine goes up there and is like, wow, it's just like the south of France. Hooray! That's not like a big hill, but I go around the corner and I'm so unfit. <laughs> I would not do the bath marathon thing that Anne Elliot does. They determined on walking around Beecham Cliff, that noble hill, whose beautiful verdure and hanging coppice render it so striking an object from almost every opening in Bath. I never look at it, said Catherine, as they walked alongside the river, without thinking of the south of France. So, Bath um, has existed in some form since about the Romans. They found the um, you know, natural hot springs, but it came to its like real high point um, during the Georgian era, uh, and then into the Regency. Um, it came like, I don't know, not like the Las Vegas of Britain, but something-ish like that. Uh, yeah, this is kind of how Jane saw it the first time she came uh, when she was a teenager. She came to visit her um, relatives, I think it was her aunt. Yeah, and she kind of seemed to feel similar to Catherine Morland's with all the, you know, rhapsodies of finally getting out of my little town in the middle of nowhere and into everything. So there was theatres and stuff, there was the healing waters which was the main attraction. I think I read that people used to drink like a glass of water a day. If you go to the Roman baths, they have a bit at the end where you can drink the water, but it always looks absolutely disgusting. There are dances in the big assembly halls, which is so beautiful still. But by the time she moved here, in like her mid-twenties, um, she wasn't so keen. I think Bath is mentioned in every one of her books, but usually not in a complimentary way. Now it's all like gently faded grandeur, and happy tourists, and like cool culture. But then it was like, you know, Jane needed her time, she needed time to write, she barely wrote, she wrote some of the Watsons I think when she was here, but nothing that got, ends up being published in one of her major works. Obviously she was very scathing of like high society and things in a lot of ways, and there was a lot of that here. I read stuff which suggested she was probably a bit pissed off about being cast to Bath, um, because like a reason a lot of people went to Bath was to get themselves a wealthy husband, and that wasn't really on her to-do list at that time. I think it was also kind of fading by the time she got here, like when her mother was young, um, like Bath was in its heyday, and when she came back it was like slightly faded people reliving the glory days, much like Sir Walter Elliot, I think. Her father also died here, which is probably another reason she wasn't a huge fan. So yeah, she lived in four different houses here. I think we might visit two of them if we have time. I think it might be time for us to move on. in the style of Tales from Seven um, Persuasion, i.e. the bumpy and hand tells as hell. I walk past the bookshop all the time, it's never open and now it's open and it's so beautiful. And do, can I just say, look at all of the girls' school books. My gosh, if I'd come here as like a 12 year old, I would just sat here all day and I'm pretty tempted to do that now. mentioned all the time, now it's just a really fancy cheery basically, but you know it's in, I think both persuasion movies, and it is really nice, it's just really intimidating, so let's just walk past it. Ooh, chandeliers and fancy people. Ooh. 
And this might look very special, and in fact it is pretty darn and special. This is also where I think, don't quote me on it, but I think this is where I met Wentworth for the first time when he arrived in Bath. But not in the movies, but I think in the book, maybe. I'll check that out later. And now I'm gonna make Thomas Hardy frown and talk architecture. <clears throat> Same ideas. There was the postmaster of Bath, and I think of quite a lot of Somerset, um, called Ralph Allen. And he decided to buy um, yeah, a small series of mines just outside Bath. There they were mining this stone, which was like really yellow and distinctive. And he started thinking this was, this was a pretty cool selling point. So he built like a big, like really impressive um, building in Bath out of it, so everyone would want some. And it absolutely worked. Um, I think for Bucking Palace or to Bath Stone, most buildings in Bath are either Bath Stone or made to look like Bath Stone because it's so much just the look now. So yeah, that's why Bath looks a bit different from anywhere else, which is really cool. Thanks, really are on the spectacularly named Gay Street and guess who lived up here? It's two very important people, it's the Crofts and also Jane Austen which is why her um, little museum house centre thing is up here somewhere. I mean, her actual house is now a dentist's but guys check out the epilogue you never knew you needed. Here we go. It's our car. Oh, that's fantastic. So you, you graduated? Yeah, a couple oh, days fantastic. ago. <laughs> so that was Martin, who's like, I think one of the most photographed men in the world. And I know him from um, HG Regency Dance. But yeah, that was the Jane Austen Centre, briefly. This is the gravel walk. And, you know, um, Anne and Frederick have a bit of, you know, some spooky nice times here. And according to the Jane Austen Centre website, this was like the lover's lane of that day. So. You know, where you want to go if you want to have a bit of a kiss or a stroll with your loved one. Just cute. Mm -hmm.